TV book. Dermot looks forward to a new series of The X Factor on First Time Voters Question Time. What am I doing? I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm 20 grand or whatever it is in debt and, and I've got no job. <laughs> L-shaped cow on the lakes. <laughs> and Pat orders a rather odd breakfast on Coach Trip. Egg, sausage, tomato, orange juice and a cup of nuts paint. <laughs> Is it me? Or is the big issue not as popular as it used to be? Big issue, sir. Sorry, what, what's your problem? What? I told you yesterday, and I told you the day before yesterday, I don't want one! <laughs> yeah, it's not as popular. Big issue? Uh, you know, how much is that? One pound seven, mate. Uh, actually, I won't bother. <laughs> I'll get a copy of Nuts for that. Yes, it's EastEnders, and I felt sorry for poor Peggy. Roxy has been squeezing her out of the running of the Vic, and there's no need to get personal, Roxy. How many times have I got to tell you, Auntie Peggy, I don't want that bust on my bar? <laughs> Our times have changed since Carry On Camping. <laughs> but Roxy went further, banishing another Albert Square icon. What is this doing here? She's back where she belongs. Are you kidding me? It was used to kill my dad. Well, the pub was insane with that. And I suppose if it had been shot, you'd like to hang a gun above the optics, would you? It's staying where it is. No, it is not! Harry, can you, um... He's going somewhere where I haven't got to look at it every day. Oh, that's it! All right, Queen Vic. Yes, thank you. But Roxy seemed to think that the Queen Vic bust had special powers. And I told you, I didn't put it there. Oh, oh, right, so it just sprouted a pair of legs, did it, and it hopped up onto the bar. <laughs> Impossible! <laughs> what? Fun while it lasted. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV Burp Poetry Corner. TV Burp Poetry Corner. The day I need your opinion on my working affairs, political beliefs, or duty to the crown, will be a sorry day in the life of Thomas Brown. <laughs> How Pineapple Dance Studios Andrew Stone is getting on with his quest for fame and fortune. Today is a heavy day for me because I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And there's an old saying in the show business world um, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. And, you know, I've been trying to do this on this level for, well, 15 years. <laughs> That's less of an overnight, more of a mini break success. <laughs> Andrew treated us to a tour of his home, including the bedroom. So come over here, let me show you my great bedroom. It's amazing. <laughs> this is where all the magic happens, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the bed. The magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in no way spoiled by the words, stay there, darling, while I just make up the sofa bed. <laughs> Andrew's got it all worked out. My pack. A portable hob. I mean, I could take that out with me if I'm getting really hungry. I love to play my portable hob in the morning. I love to play my portable hob in the morning. <laughs> He's got a portable hob and a sofa bed. What girl could resist? <laughs> but what of artistic director Louis Spence? Well, he just can't seem to be able to resist the beat. We've got one half his lip.
That was just my intro music. I have that every morning. <laughs> every time the drumming starts, off he goes. Watch. <laughs> yeah. And again. There's no nerves after a while. <laughs> Louis was once in the hit musical Cats and kept the costume. Of course, Cats really only showed us the upside of Cats. Louis offered us a more realistic version of what Cats might have been like if he'd written it. the size of the litter tray. keep forgetting the names of the individual members of the Pussycat Dolls. Deceits, uncleanness, truthfulness, <laughs> done, mischief, and abomination. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, David Dimble's still out and about at our expense unearthing oldie worldy knickknacks on his show Seven Ages of Britain. See, I liked his version of Pop Goes the Weasel. Then can I have a look? And I would say it's done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At this point, you can say... Up goes the weasel. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's been all over, even to the canteen of Trinity College, Cambridge, to look out a picture of King Henry VIII. It's a good image and a good memoir of um, representing where Trinity has come from and its history. So, obviously, Henry VIII is very brash and brazen. What do you think about the cod piece? A little bit dry, but the chips were nice. <laughs> Even more interesting than the picture was an old suit of armour that once belonged to Henry, and Dave was getting jiggy with it. By the time this suit of armour was made, he'd already become very, very fat, huge round the waist, vast bottom, <laughs> burnished steel, etched with gold, the exaggerated codpiece there. Do you mind, Dave? That's a bit sore. <laughs> this week, Dimble offered us his Ken Dodd impression. Away, you scullion, you rampallion, you fustilarian, I'll tickle your catastrophe. It's <laughs> fustilarious! I'll tickle my arm! Oh, what a day for taking David Dimble around the country, looking at ancient midnights and saying, How's that for seven ages of Britain? <laughs> this week, found him in Nostal Priory, looking at a doll's house that made him feel like a giant. It's so beautifully made, this, so finely done, all this furniture. Makes me feel like a giant looking in on Nostal itself. <laughs> a giant dimble. <laughs> Imagine that. Three, five, oh, five. I am the dimble, and here I come. Leave me alone! I think the most interesting item for me. Get off! <laughs> I think the most interesting item for me on Dimble's show was learning all about the pottery firing process at the old Wedgwood factory. These are little pieces of clay, mix the different minerals, each one numbered, and each one with instructions of where they should go in the kiln or the so-called biscuit oven. MBO, the middle of the biscuit oven. TBO, top of the biscuit oven. TTBO, 
tip-top of the biscuit oven. Hmm, see, I, I like the top of the biscuit oven. And I like the middle of the biscuit oven, but then I also like the tip-top of the biscuit oven. Which is better? There's only one way to find out. Sings Ubra, my foot song on May the Best House Win. Ubra, my foot. <laughs> Doll says sorry on Lark Rise to Candleford. Well, I'm really sorry. Really sorry. <laughs> and Paddy and Marlon get to know each other a little bit better on Emmerdale. Really oh. You do that with me, oh. hmm. Not quite sure what's going on there, but uh, probably best not to inquire too closely. Now, I'm a bit annoyed this week because someone has used up all the toilet paper in the ITV toilets. Frankly, my dear, he doesn't give a damn. It takes a and the rest. Yes. Yes, it was Dancing on Ice, and it looked like Gary Lucy had a supporter in from Australia. Gary and Maria. You're Mark, you. Be cool. Here I get off. And... Cramford Cramford Oh, hang on a minute. Where's the sleeve of my jacket and shirt? Where have they gone? It felt like a straightforward break, and I was confident it would heal fast. Boy, that's my sleeve! <laughs> that sheep's been wearing it as a trouser! <laughs> Give me back my sleeve, you... You get it! I think I better stop now, don't you? Shoo. Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. TV highlight of the week. Okay, wonder where can we pop this little on? Where it's gonna be nice and safe. Right under the stairs. <laughs> As you may know, I'm a big fan of country file, provided, that is, all the animals are treated equally. And naturally, I was disappointed that John Craven used an unkind word to describe the ducks. Meet the ruddy duck. <laughs> well, there's no need for bad language. Hello, Judith, how are you? Oh, hello there. <laughs> and, any luck today? Any, any sign yes. of a ruddy duck? Yes. <laughs> Don't take your frustration out on the ducks, John! When we started the eradication in, in the UK, this country held 95% of all the ruddy ducks in Europe. They've got as much right to be here as any other bird! If there was a source of ruddy ducks in the UK and they consistently moved into Europe, there would be more and more ruddy ducks in France, more and more ruddy ducks appearing in Spain, and in the end it wouldn't be feasible to keep on top of the large, larger numbers that were appearing in Spain. Oi! That's how fascism started. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but he didn't say anything about the flaming geese. <laughs> it's time for the K Factor Not Live final! Yeah. Last week, you put Peter the Duck through, and this week it's a slightly different format. It's the K Factor on Ice! <laughs> Ooh. 
Hello and welcome to the K-Factor on Ice. Your turn. Thanks, Phil. Your turn. It's time to welcome our skating stars, Winston Stimson. Tommy Trundle. Meerkat, Harry Hill. Bessie the Jackson. And Peter the Duck. And what a week it's been. The finalists have been put in pairs and taught how to skate. But because there are five of them, Peter is forced to skate by himself. Yeah, Peter's finding it quite hard. Yes, with no wings, balance is a problem for him. They're all finding it tough moving around on ice because it's so sleepy. Oh, me trunk! Then, at the dress rehearsal, tragedy strikes. Winston falls awkwardly and injures his leg. Sadly, the leg is broken, but Winston vows to go on. I can't let down the fans. I will be skating tonight, but I could die. First onto the ice is Peter the Duck. Fairly sedate skate there from Peter the Duck. Bit of a wobble, but is it enough to get him through? Peter, that was a mess. Your leg lines were completely wrong, and where were your wings? Ah, uh, he hasn't got any, Jason. <laughs> Next onto the ice, Tommy Trundle and Harry Meerkat. Then came the turn of Winston Stimson and Bessie. In a very ambitious move, they decide to change the song at the last minute to Ravel's Bolero. Some lovely skating here from this amazing pair. Of course, doing the routine that Jane and Chris made famous. I'm not sure when, but I'll certainly try to find out when I get home. But will Winston be able to do that lift? Oh my word, these two have got to walk off with the prize. Those scores have got absolutely nothing to do with the outcome. Go to itv.com forward slash TV burp and get voting for your favourite. We'll reveal the winner next week. The last! <laughs> Go trip now. Or as we call it, Big Brother on Wheels. And, and Mark and Mary seem to have settled in nicely. When we check into hotels on holiday, the first thing a certain person does is bounce up and down on the bed. And I love skipping. I love skipping round. So skip if you see screen. me skipping, it's because I'm happy. <laughs> oh, grow up. <laughs> I... No, she's right. Skipping's fun. Amongst the rest of the coach trippers, I bet there's a real holiday feel. What do I want to celebrate your two weeks for? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't really like you anyway. Oh, okay. Bitter and twisted, vile, naive queen. That's what you are. <laughs> We're all going on a summer holiday. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> We're trying to start an No more working for a week or two. Come on, Lee. To make our dreams come true. <laughs> the travellers were joined by a rather special duo this week. Meet Caroline and Ross, and they're no strangers to Europe. People might recognise us because we were in a band called Scooch. We represented uh, Eurovision uh, 2007. No, it's not. <laughs> Not ringing any bells. You might recognise us, possibly, from Scooch. 
I vaguely remember the name. <laughs> like Caroline said, we were both in Scooch and we represented the UK in Eurovision in 2007. Oh, Scooch, yeah. Came second to bottom in the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Got ya. Yeah. <laughs> the trip brought back sad memories to these two ex-Scoochers. I think out of all the countries, we thought we wouldn't come to Serbia because when we did uh, Eurovision, Serbia beat us. Yeah. Um, so, no, we probably n never thought we'd come here. On that logic, the whole of Europe's a no-go area. <laughs> But as it's Eurovision week, maybe we should give them another chance. What do you say? Yeah. Well, we're going to anyway. With their second to bottom entry in 2007's Eurovision Song Contest, it's Russ and Caroline from Scooch. Your favorite knitted item. <laughs> Good night. Yes, and you can go behind the scenes with the K Factor. So you think you can knit unraveled. An exclusive episode is available online now at itv.com slash TV Well, who's up for that big jackpot? Two families are in for the shock of their lives when Ant and Deck turn up on their doorstep. Next tonight. Prawn balls, gorgeous.